government is taking that away from people. Um, I set up, I started off with two friends to speak out of life because I just couldn't sleep with her. Ended up with really high doses of medication myself while I was working there. Um, once I realised what I was asked to do, my conscience just was getting made to roll with me. I worked, I slept, I cried, and that was all I did. I eventually went off sick. So all in all, I think I actually did assessments for the three and a half months. Then I handed my notice in, and the relief was just overwhelming. But I was still too scared to speak out. I was afraid that I might need a reference. I was so anxious and depressed I couldn't think properly. And eventually, what I've got to say, the help of those men told me. Um, I'm a member of Solidarity in case anyone thinks I'm not declaring myself am, but my campaign is not part of political. Um, but I did have support from people in my party, my family and friends were really good, and eventually I found the courage to speak out anonymously. And I did that. And then I got in touch with the Daily Record. Once I got the confidence and felt a wee bit braver, I went to the Daily Record and they carried the story that I told Swiss Hopewell. And apparently they've never had such an overwhelming response to an article like that. Um, they were inundated with calls. Um, they ran a whole one. That one, the whole thing was about Atos. They really hammered out to them. They, they've been really, really supportive in terms of the campaign, but I'm only one person. And a campaign needs pe people to build it. The problem with the city and disabled people are that we're no well, so we can't build it, develop it and maintain it on our own. We need unity from other people to support us. In Glasgow, they've organised as a Glasgow against our toss. There's the Black Triangle campaign, which is based in Edinburgh. There's an Aberdeen against our toss, and what they're all doing is trying to fight the same battle. <coughs> We've seen recently last, last week or two weeks ago, I was elected to the committee of a new Canumbra Railway group which is called United Resistance in Scotland. And what that aims to do is pull all the, again it's non party political, doesn't matter if you have any political meetings, none at all, everybody's welcome to join any of the campaigns I'm involved in. And we we aim to draw the campaigns together, get a wee bit of organisation about it, a wee, a wee bit is all stuck together, all send out the same message, and maybe build out upper numbers a wee bit like that. A guy from the borders, um, he had set up a Facebook page for me, and I wrote it down because I can never remember it. It's called Support the Nurse to Blue Whistle and Atos Assessments, and it's reached itself about three weeks ago, and it's reached just under 9,000 people in three weeks, I think, at the 8,750 or something. And what I've used that for is to put a lot of information on it so that MD can access that site and they can see what questions are going to ask and how they're going to twist it. I've basically blown all their secrets out of the water. I've also posted um, every bit of correspondence I've had with the various governments. I've written to Dalton Smith, I've written to the Scottish Government, the Scottish Government was just next door reserve benefits, nothing they can do. My argument is that this is a health issue and health devolved to the Scottish Parliament. None of them are really entertaining me. Labour brought it in, the condemns have made it worse, more pernicious, and <coughs> 73 people are even dying after Atos assessments. And they said care sitting in the fence saying, no, we don't really agree with it, but we're not going to do anything about it. So we're not getting much luck there. Obviously, we need Dr. Smith, can you care less about Scotland, let alone sitting disabled in Scotland. Um, but what I have done is I made contact with a guy who is a professor of disability studies in Canada, and he's helped at the moment to file a complaint in the United Nations um, to try and bring criminal proceedings against the British government for the role and the treatment of the sitting disabled in this country. Now, where that will take us, I don't know. You know, the way I look at it is we can either stand up and fight or we can curl up and die and I let them. There's enough is dying through our health and through you know the, the way that they've been treated without giving in to them. So I ain't gonna lie down and die, I'll keep on fighting. Where it gets is who knows. Um, I come originally from Govan, which is quite a deprived area in Glasgow. 
been famous for the past few days, right? so she's probably about almost 100 years ago, 1815. Um, a group of ordinary government women were gathered when they were trying, the men were away at the war and they tried to put up the rents. And the Glasgow women said, no, you're not doing it. And they formed a women's army. They used to bang like the old tin dust bins, bang the lids and all that. And the, the guys were coming around to try and evict them and he'd get their money off them. And they won. They won their campaign. So I don't know if it's genetic, they've been born in government, or if it's just that um, I get involved with certain people doing the poll tax that politicised me. I'm not really sure. But um, I certainly have no intention to lie down and dying or giving in. The reason I'm involved in the bedroom tax is because it's not fair, first and foremost. Secondly, it affects sick and disabled people disproportionately. It's not the fact that it's a thing that's disabled people. I think it's an ambiguity. It's an issue to wait till the end of my house. We've got a discussion. It's okay. It affects affects sick and disabled people disproportionately. And the figures I think are something like two thirds of every household that will be affected by this tax has at least one member of the family who's sick and disabled. That's where my kind of particular interest in the bedroom tax comes in, although I think in general it's just unfair anyway. Recently they're shouting about Cameron and his U-turn and the um, disabled children will be exempt. No, they won't. Up to the family to have it judged, each case on its own merit. And my question would be, who's going to be doing this assessment to see whether these kids are disabled enough or not to need a room? A room for the equipment is going to be something like Atos or just a sham company out to make money at the taxpayers' expense and are absolutely contributing nothing to the well-being of the citizens of this country. I am part of bedroom, anti-bedroom tax in Federation, the west of Scotland, but I'm not in the committee or anything, I've got enough kind of doing, doing more stuff, but I totally support the bedroom tax campaign and I will be active. Tommy will tell me more about the campaign. There is a demo on the 30th of this month of the Dutch to attend. Um, what I would say is, if anybody needs any more information about ATOS, then you can either get me on Facebook, get me on my support the nurse to blue us on ATOS assessments page, through the Solidarity Scotland website, or any Twitter on Twitter, uh, in B thing A Joy L Drummond and that's for anybody that wants to ask me anything that can get any help in any way. The next week I'm going to do I've done the kind of bit of the assessment, I've done the bit of the <coughs> uh, um, political stuff, right to Parliament stuff. My next week bit is going to be about people that feel their assessment have to go into tribunal because that's the majority of us. Personally <coughs> I've had since I left working for that clause, I've had three assessments, I've never tried all the heat trial people. But this time, because my husband works and my PAC is contribution based, that will last for a year. So I've had no income since April. My husband's meant to keep me. Which considering I paid work as a nurse quite a lot of tax and national insurance, I don't think it's really fair. So I've got a solicitor who is taking it, but waiting for the work back from the first tier tribunal aim to go to second tier. And I will be posting updates on what happens on that on my website, but also um, I'll be posting information about how to go about going to tribunal. And if MD really wants just a chat, I've spoke to a guy in Wales through a third party in Canada at 3 o'clock in the morning who is very distressed, feeling suicidal, and had this three day conversation with him, and it's because of his ATOS assessment. Um, I'll speak to people over the internet um, and try and help them, support them as best I can. Most of the information that I think is valuable is already on the site in terms of the actual ATOS assessments. But if anybody's got any questions that they'd like to <coughs> send me privately, then I'll try my best to help you. And if anybody's got any really pressing concerns, then I'm sure you can contact those ways she can get in touch with me. The other thing I have to say is because, although I'm not working just there, I'm still a nurse at heart, is that if anybody does feel so that they think about taking their lives or harming themselves, then you can phone out of your GP's note 
available then with us in NHS 24-24 there is also the also breathing space which is a confidential telephone helpline and obviously the Samaritans that then never does feel that low. Like I say, enough is a dying no more. Thanks. Of the poorest and the most disabled. 
disabled households across England, Wales and Scotland by £14 a week minimum, as high as £25 a week for some households. On the same day that they're introducing a bedroom tax to cut the income of the poor and the disabled, they're introducing a tax cut for the millionaires that's going to give them £100,000 extra every single year. The same day, 1st of April, that they're going to introduce a benefit cap so that anyone in benefit is going to be worse off this year than last year because benefits will not now be uprated in line with inflation. The same day that they introduce a benefit cap, they have announced that they will be voting against the European Parliament's move to introduce a bonus cap. The European Parliament wants to cap bankers' bonuses. And the same David Cameron that wants to cap benefits is fighting to have no cap on bankers' bonuses. These people who tell us that we need a bedroom tax because we're all in it together and we all have to save money for the exchequer. That's why we need to cut the housing benefit bill. That's why we're introducing a bedroom tax, they'll tell you. And yet, they are not prepared to introduce a mansion tax for those houses that are worth a million pounds or more. They're not willing to tax the millionaires a single penny more. In actual fact, they're willing to tax them less. Well, they tax the poor and the disabled more. That, brothers and sisters, is a clear case of right hypocrisy. That's the stench that you've got from that parliament when they tell us that we're all in it together. Quite frankly, brothers and sisters, none of you here, none of you, would be willing to subject yourself to open heart surgery from a motor mechanic. What? So why should we allow social housing policy to be made by multi-millionaires who wouldn't be no accounts or who's if it fell and hurt them in the heat? They don't have a single clue. They don't have a single clue about the effect that their policies are going to have in communities that lend and bread for this country. I debated with one of these individuals. A space cadet is what I called them. <laughs> Jacob Reese Mogg, son of Jason Reese Mogg, Lord Reese Mogg, former editor of the Times newspaper. I was on the Jeremy Vine show a few weeks ago, debating with this guy on the bedroom tap. And this guy, he just happened to have a 12 bedroom mansion told me on the radio that we have to deal with those who under-occupy their houses. Those who live in council homes who under-occupy should take in lodgers. And I thought to myself there, this guy, has he ever been in a council house? Has he ever been in a house where the bedrooms are cheap by Joel? Has he ever been in a council house where the toilet is a couple of steps across from the bedroom? Has he ever seen a tenement building from the inside? It's not right for him to talk for his 12 bedroom mansion about, well, why don't you get in a lodger? Try taking in a lodger when you can hardly swing a cat in a council house or a house, housing association house. That's the type of solutions these people are coming up with. When the reality is, over the last 20 years, we've lost one million homes. One million council and housing association homes have been lost to privatisation, to private purchase. And many of the homes, hundreds of thousands of those homes, that used to be purchased by individuals are now owned by one individual. Because the one growth trade that we've had in the last 20 years is private landlords. Private landlords have been getting thrown up all over the country. And when you hear Cameron saying we 
need to introduce a bedroom tax because we have to cut the housing benefit bill. Why is the housing benefit bill going up? It's not because people in council houses or housing associates houses are getting mere housing benefit. The reason the housing benefit bill has increased to £50 billion pounds is because there are so many people being forced into the private sector to rent homes in the private sector. And what are your private sector landlords doing? They're increasing the rent to unknown levels. They're ripping the PISH out of the situation. They're making hundreds of millions of pounds profit from having homes that used to be in the public sector, now in the private sector, and we all pay for it. We all pay for their profits because we pay the housing benefit bill. If, Mr Cameron, you want to cut the housing benefit bill, why don't you cut rents in the private sector? That would cut the housing benefit bill. That's the type of policy we should be introducing. Instead, instead of attacking his friends who are on a private landlords, instead of attacking his friends, the multi-millionaires who are getting a tax cut, he would rather attack the Hooper family. Two parents, five children, living in a four bedroom house in Hull. They've got a disabled daughter. She's got her own room, but it's an extension because the bedroom wasn't big enough to accommodate the wee girl's wheelchair. So they had to build an extension, and that extension has been counted as an extra bedroom. They are facing an extra £14 a week, an extra £56 a month in order to pay for their disabled daughter's bedroom. Or what about the couple from Inverness that some of you might have read of? Amanda Papler, multiple sclerosis sufferer, requires a wheelchair to be able to get out relies on a husband who's a carer, Peter Parker. They have a box bedroom where they keep all our disabled adaptations, including a wheelchair. I've now told them you're going to have to pay an extra £14 a week for that bedroom. They said, well, wait a minute. You assess this for this house. How many of you are sitting here that know that in council and housing association houses? Every one of you were assessed. You were told to fill in a needs forum. It's not your fault whether you were put in to a two bedroom house when you only needed a one bedroom. It's not your fault you were put in a three bedroom house when you only needed two. You were given the house that the council or the housing association had to give you. They don't have enough one bedroom houses. That's why you were putting a two bedroom house. And in relation to Amanda and Peter Butler and Inverness, multiple sclerosis suffer, requiring a box room to store a wheelchair, she's going to be punished. She's going to have to face an extra £14 a week in rent. And the point that Peter Butler makes is where am I going to get it? Housing benefit is a means tested benefit. Let's remember that. You don't get housing benefit unless you're already poor. So where are you going to get an extra 14 quid a week? Or an extra 25 quid a week? What's the goal? Is it the food? Is it the heating? Is it the clothes? What do these people expect you to live on? Nothing. We have got to say here that this is a line in the sand issue. This is an issue 
communities and live there for the whole lives. We don't have the choice of changing house the way they change their hair colour. That's not what we've got as an option. We've got to fight to defend what we've got. And we have to say to these people that the consequence of your policy is to drive the poor further into poverty. But even worse, to raise the spectre of evictions. Yeah. Evictions because you're in rent arrears. Think about it. £14 a week. £56 a month. Two months of rent arrears. Three months of rent arrears. You're over £150 in arrears. That's easy for a sheriff to grant an order for an eviction. You've not paid your rent arrears. Then you can be evicted. Well, I think we in this anti-bedroom tax federation, and hopefully you tonight here in Irvine, will take a decision that you're going to be involved in a campaign and it's got two aims. The first aim is to scrap the bedroom tax. That's what we want. We want to scrap lots of looking well. But the second aim of the campaign has to be that we give a commitment loud and clear to neighbours, to communities, to other parts of Ayrshire, other parts of Scotland. We give a commitment. We might not know you. But if you are facing a bedroom tax eviction, you will not stand alone. We will stop the eviction. We'll stand by the We've got to say to ourselves, your brothers and sisters, are we prepared in this day and age, 21st century, to see families kicked out of the street for the crime of being poor? Because that's what's on the cards here. And I think each and every one of us has a social responsibility. Whether you're affected by it or not, by the way. This isn't about just those that are affected fighting. This should be about everybody in the community being prepared to fight. For your family and for your neighbours and for your community. We have to say that there will be no bedroom tax evictions. And by the way, the campaign's already underway in other parts of the country. In Dundee, for instance, they have been up and organised for a few weeks. They've had public meetings in most of the areas. They've had lobbies of the council. And last week, they entered the council chamber, chamber and they demanded to be heard. And the campaign has been so influential that Dundee City Council took a decision last week that there will be no evictions for the first 12 months of the bedroom tax. Now some of us will say, quite rightly, that's not enough. But what we can all agree on is it's a starting point. It's a starting point. And if Dundee City Council can take the decision to say there will be no evictions for the first 12 months, then why can't every other local authority in Scotland take the exact same decision. We should be calling on every council in Scotland to say as a start there will be no evictions for 12 months. And then take it further. Take it further. We can do what Nosley Council has done. The outskirts of Liverpool. They have decided to take the opportunity of the bedroom tax to redefine households so that box bedrooms have become dining rooms. <coughs> box bedrooms have become storerooms. They have redefined 568 homes within their stock. And that means that none of those families will be paying the bedroom tax. We could go further and do what Brighton Council is going to do. Brighton Council went further than the need. They have just made the statement loud and clear. They will evict no one in Brighton who can't afford to pay their bedroom tax. They're going to put in certain safeguards to make sure that they identify that the arrears are actually bedroom tax arrears. But what they're saying loud and clear is there will be no evictions in Brighton. Well, brothers and 
the sisters, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out, does it? If they can do these things in Dundee, if they can do these things in Nosley, if they can do these things in Brighton, surely they can do them in the 32 councils here in Scotland as well. There is a petition going before the Scottish Parliament on the 16th of April, a petition by the Govan Law Centre, by a solicitor called Mike Daly, and that petition calls on the Scottish Government to change the Housing Scotland Act 2001, section 16, if any of you are interested. And what that change in the Housing Scotland Act 2001 would do is it would treat bedroom tax arrears as ordinary debt, not as rent arrears. Now, again, it's not a perfect solution because people will still have debt. That's why we need to get rid of the bedroom tax. But that change in the Housing Scotland Act would overnight remove the threat of evictions. And I'm going to say to the SNP government, I'm for independence personally. Not everybody in this room will be for independence. The bedroom tax campaign is nothing about independence. But I've got to say to the SNP, if you really want to inspire folk, if you really want to show folk what independence could be all about, isn't it about time instead of words of opposition, you actually done something and changed the law to defend the poor and the disabled families of Scotland by removing the threat of eviction? Is that too much to ask from a majority SNP government? I don't think so. Brothers and sisters, I think it's clear that we live in a very divided society. We live in a society where you have MPs in Westminster whose weekly grocery allowance is £160. That's what they get, weekly grocery allowance on top of their wage. Their wage is 65000 738 quid a year. 65,000 quid. But they get a weekly grocery allowance of 160. That's what I mean about the hypocrisy. These people got 160 pounds a week grocery allowance, but they give 71 pounds a week in job seekers allowance. That's the hypocrisy of what these people actually represent. We have to say loud and clear here, that we, I, are ordinary people. Sure, we're not all powerful. But do you know something? I can remember 24 years ago when I had some real hair. Coming to meetings like this in Urban and other parts of Ayrshire. And I remember as a, a young pup arguing that we had to stand against the poll tax. And I remember people saying to me that in those meetings, people who were genuinely against the poll tax, saying, Tommy, there's nothing you can do. It's Missy Thatcher. She's the Iron Lady. By that time, she'd taken on the miners. She'd taken on the steel workers, the health workers. She'd taken on General Galtieri. She was unbeatable, we were told. We were dismissed as a rag bob and tail. But we stuck at it. We appealed to people to stand together. We appealed to people to refuse to pay poll tax and we, refused, we called on people to defend their communities against the sheriff officers. And within 12 months, we had a million people in Scotland refusing to pay. By the time they got it in England, 12 months later, there was 14 million people refusing to pay and the poll tax was broke. Brothers and sisters, that was against a strong Tory government. Today, you don't have a strong Tory government. You have a very weak, condemned government. Very weak, very unrepresentative government. I think we have an opportunity here to make a stand on an issue which is universally unpopular and which can be beaten and can be broken. But it's not going to be beaten by words alone. We're going to have to organise. And that's why 
cry out and appeal to each and every one of you. This meeting tonight has been called by solidarity, but it's not a solidarity issue. This is the, an issue for one political party. This is an issue for everybody, whether you're involved in politics or not. This is an issue not about right and left. This is an issue about right and wrong. And the bedroom tax is wrong. We, we, have to, we have to ask you, each and every one of you, to sign up the night to become part of the campaign here in Irving. To spread the word. Some of you here might be from different parts of Irving or different parts of Ayrshire. Let's build the campaign in those parts of Ayrshire. I'm going to come up in early April to address a meeting. I know I'm addressing a meeting Coat Bridge on Sunday night. I know I'm going to Govan Hall on the Monday night. I know I'm going to East Coat Bridge on the Tuesday night. Cardone on the Wednesday night. Shelton on the Thursday night. This campaign is building all across Scotland. <coughs> we need to get ourselves organised. That's why the demonstration next Saturday is important. I would appeal to you to come through to Glasgow to march against the bedroom tax. But then I would appeal to you to go back from that demonstration and determine in your own street, in your own communities, that you'll develop phone trees, that you'll develop contact lists, that you'll know who's involved in the campaign and that you'll keep in touch with those who may be threatened at any time with bedroom tax evictions because they can't afford to pay the extra rent. Because that's where the metal of this campaign is going to be shown. If we can stand together to prevent any potential evictions. Personally, I think the government should be stepping in here and doing our job. They should be stepping in and showing the responsibility. Standing up for the poor and the disabled by saying, no, there's not going to be any evictions. But if they're not going to do it, brothers and sisters, then we are going to do it. We're going to have to do it. I'm going to finish. I probably spoke um, far too long. I apologise for that. But I do get a bit uh, passionate about these issues because I think when you're faced with a government that can sit in those benches, and you see it in the telly, don't you, every week, sitting there guffawing and laughing and cheering as they pass cup after cup after cup. And the multi-millionaires are laughing all the way to the bank because they're not paying an extra penny more. They are saving £100,000 a year so that you can pay for it. You're paying for their extra yacht. You're paying for their third and fourth home. They're trying to take you one home half year. Think about it. Lord Freud, one of the Tory advisors, he's one of the architects of the bedroom tax. An eight-bedroom mansion in Kent, and he's got a £1.9 million townhouse with four bedrooms in London. Why are we not taxing his extra bedrooms? Why is it the poor that we're taxing them and not the rich? Brothers and sisters, don't take this line down. Let's go off on these and let's go. Thanks a lot.
sanctuaries, get them wherever you can. If you know they're coming out of the community, you come into the centre or anything like that, get out there and nab them. Give them a right hard time because that is one of the ways people power. That they know that they are going to have a lot of the community opposed to what they're going to be doing in that council and it's going to be transparent. It'll be reported in the local press. We will know how they have voted because we will find out every one of them how they've voted one way or another. We'll confront them. And if they think for a minute that you're not going to get them re-elected, they'll think again, I can assure you. So get out here and do that first off. That's one of the first things you can do when you leave this meeting and think about doing that tomorrow or the next day. Look up the subjects that are in the local paper or you get them online or phone North Nurture Council and ask them if you're stuck. But that is one of the first things you can do. And that is councillors across North Nurture because I know there's some folk here that are from different parts of North Nurture as well as folk to air and so on in the room at the moment. Um, so, regardless of where you come from, <coughs> see who's in administration in your council, if it's no North Ayrshire, and get on to them and really give them a hard time for that because that is one of the ways that we can actually make a difference. Now, what I'd like to do is um, let you have a wee bit of contribution here to the meeting. Um, and if you want, if it's a question about ATOS, <coughs> say it is. If it's about the bedroom tax, say it is. Now, I would also like to say, can you make it quite brief and don't hog it because everybody's got to get their return right. So I know that you two have had your hands up from the beginning, so if one of you wants to ask a question just now, okay? <coughs>
It's part and parcel of being family, isn't it? In fact, it's one of the things we're supposed to do. You're supposed to help with the upbringing of the wains. And never mind helping. If you're anything like my law, then you want to get the wane as, as, as often as possible. So it's part and parcel of family life. So you've got a wee house that's got an extra bedroom. And you can take the wains. And the wains have got somewhere to stay. Well, now if you do that, and you've been helping bring up your family all these years, you're going to get chance an extra £14 a week because of it. There's no provision whatsoever to help grandparents who are taking children, and they could be doing it more regular, by the way. They could be doing it because of addiction problems in the house or medical problems in the house, and maybe they're having to take the children more. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They'll know your kids, you're going to get charged because you don't need that bedroom. You're going to get charged for it. Or, if you're in a situation that thousands of families are in, where there's been a marital breakdown, where there's shared custody of the children, where you've worked hard and maybe you've had to sell the marital house and now the two of you have got a, a house each, but you've made sure of the house that you've got has got an extra bedroom because you've got shared custody of the wean. Well, if you're low paid and in receipt of housing benefit, you're going to be charged £14 extra a week in order to keep your aim wane on a temporary basis. No provision to take care of that actual reality, everyday reality of communities of length and breadth of the country. So you've got that situation quite clearly, which is a major, major problem. Grandparents, marital breakdown in situation. Never mind the fact that 80%, 80% of those affected in Scotland are households with disabilities. And by the way, it makes sense, doesn't it? If you've got a disability, if you need to store a kidney dialysis machine, if you need to store a wheelchair, if you need to store respiratory equipment, then you need an extra room. Is it any wonder then the 80% of the people affected by this tax are families with disabilities? And then you go and you look at the point that's been raised by, I'm sorry, I've caught your first name, Jane. Jane. Jane raises the point, and by the way, Jane, you're one of hundreds and hundreds of cases where there has to be a legal challenge. There has to be a legal challenge. Because think about it, each and every one of you who went to the Housing Association, each and every one of you who went to the council, fill in your form, applying for a house, and maybe you were overcrowded where you were. I'm going to come to that specifically. I'm going to come to that specifically. But the overwhelming majority of people when they go and get a house, and they're told to fill in forms, maybe because you were in an overcrowded situation, the council or the housing association look at your form, and they decide what house you're entitled to. And they give you that house. How can it be legal then that the housing association or the council gave you that house, but now you have to face an extra £14 no, a week because of a government policy? That's got to be challengeable. And then you've got the specifics that Jane raises of a housing association that builds two bedroom houses, refuses to build one bedroom houses, Jane said. Builds two bedroom houses, puts people who don't need two bedrooms into those bedroom houses, and then turns around and says, Well, you need to pay us an extra 40 pounds a week. No. And if you don't, we're going to have a The government told them to build two bedroom houses in the condition because the family took no well back and they didn't need to move out that house and keep them back here. There you go. That's why the houses were built. They, they, so, so the government gives government grant to housing association. By the way, good forward planning. Let's applaud them for that. That's a great idea. Why build more one bedroom houses, particularly targeted for elderly people, when they're maybe going to need a carer either full time or part time? You need an extra bedroom. Good policy. What are they doing with that good policy? They're unraveling it and they're actually ramming it down people's throats by saying, oh, I see that house that you got because you might need a carer in the future. Eh, we're not going to charge you an extra 14 quid a week. Where are you going to get the money? And the housing association responsible, in my opinion, we have to be going to the law centres, we have to be going to the Citizens Advice Bureau, we have to be saying, hey, wait, we want, I want a legal challenge here. I want to take this 
government in court, I want to take out the association in court. This isn't my fault. But, and this is the point I come back to, Jane, all of that is important and we should do all of that. Lobby the councillors, lobby the MSPs, lobby the MPs, all of that's important. At the end of the day, Jane, see if somebody's coming to your house because you can't afford to pay your rent, they're going to evict you. I hope people in here are going to be outside saying to the sheriff officer, you're looking at that. And the sheriff officers are running about like Rottweilers in suits, trying to take money off the poor. We stopped them doing the warrant sales, we can stop them doing the evictions. And that's why it's important to organise brothers and sisters. Don't just come to the meeting and say, yes, that's right, and it's terrible, it's bedroom tax. Get involved in it as well. It's not going to take all your time, but give up a wee bit of time just to get involved. You know, I need to be able to do that. I don't know whether there's a law centre in it. Well, I think the benefit of the 